model. Didn't even know what it was. Yeah, right. No, it wasn't like, oh, I want to grow up and be a model. I mean, I don't think, I mean, when I was growing up, you didn't really, it wasn't something you really aspired to as yeah. a career because you didn't really know what it was. It wasn't really a job that was, I mean, obviously media and social media and all of that wasn't around back then because yeah, we're talking yeah. the 80s, you know. So, yeah. I mean, jobs like that weren't something that were on the forefront of children's minds. No. You know, it was, you know, a vet, a doctor, a nurse, mm. you know, you, your old school kind of yeah, totally. solid professions. And that's what you more thought about um, or a teacher or, or something like that. Whereas, you know, now I, there's so many girls that are so young and I have parents and, you know, mum's coming up to me going, my daughter... My daughter's eight and she wants to grow up and right. be a model. It's like, how do you even know what that is and what that entails? And yeah. so for me, it definitely wasn't that. The whole way I got into it was um, there were a lot of girls around when I was got a bit older, around the age of 15, that were doing deportment classes and they were right. being run through modelling agencies. And um, a few of my friends were doing them, doing the classes, and I just had my heart broken for the first time and I was mm. quite like confidence just zero yeah and um mum I'd mentioned maybe doing it to you know doing the classes to mum and she was sort of like oh yeah maybe because mum would I didn't think wanted me to get too involved in that world of yeah yeah the physical side yeah um but I think when my confidence was so low she thought that maybe the deportment classes might be a good way to help me boost that yeah and um so did it um yeah it did well not initially I still was super shy because I was very shy growing up as well do you still think you're shy totally I think I am too and you know what are you nuts (laughs) seriously I am though and also I'm an introvert I get my energy from being by myself yeah overwhelmed around too many people more than I go Mm. more than six in a room and I'm fucked I hate it yeah <laughs> yeah no I'm, I'm very much the same especially if I don't know many people I kind of hold back and I don't yeah, say too much at yeah. first which I think people sometimes mistake for being aloof right. or a bit snobby but it's not it's just that I, I don't if I don't know someone I sort of need to take time yeah. to really kind of form that bond and connection but yeah so when I started the deportment classes I was pretty um pretty reserved at first but then the owners of the modelling agency that were running the classes saw me at the first graduation that I did and they asked me if I wanted to work. Right. I thought, oh my God, really? That's bizarre, but I need a part-time job. And I was, you know, 16 by that, at that point right. and I needed to sort of start earning my own money because my parents weren't going to support me forever. So that's kind of why I started doing it. How you got into More it? More because, well, just because I could. Yeah, right. Not because I thought... I, I want to grow up and be a model yeah. or, or I think I've got the, you know, the look or whatever. It yeah. was, it just kind of happened like that. So. But then you go, so you, you are a bit, you know, you're at that awkward age, mm. being around 16 is pretty awkward anyway. Yeah. And then that's kind of when your career started. Yeah. Did you struggle with, with it being all about the physical to start with? Not to start with. I think I modeled for the first year or two in Perth and, um, and, you know, I got work pretty regularly and quite a lot. And right. um, so I started to build up a bit of a portfolio, which started to build confidence, which I felt like maybe I can do this. And the whole right. appeal for modelling to me was the fact that it, it wasn't that nine to five job. And mm. it wasn't, um, I, I would be working with different people all the time, different locations, maybe travel the world. Like that yeah. was the kind of, that was the hook for me. Um, and the more areas of modeling that I worked in I really enjoyed it like going from catwalk to photographic to Mm. tv commercials and I thought I just really love this and then it started to make sense to me that's why I struggled to kind of connect with doing the algebra and the science and all of that because this is this is my path and I knew that as soon as I got into it I knew it Mm. and so um I think that's what propelled me to keep going. And then I won a modelling competition and went to Sydney, but that's when I did start to struggle. Right, okay. Because then I was in a much bigger market with Mm. many more models from overseas and around the country. Mm. Um, More work, but it it was harder to get the work. And I think then I started to struggle with the physical side because at that time, you know, this was back in 1994. Four ninety-five, mm. and that's when that whole heroin chic look oh, was really fuck. strong, and yeah. it was so the opposite of how I looked. Yeah. Um, and so that's the look that people were after, and that mm. was a really strong trend at the time. And I just didn't fit the mold, and so I really struggled to 
to get the work to sustain living in an expensive city like Sydney mm. at the age of 19 at this point. And so I had to keep going back to Perth and making money in that market to then fly back to Sydney and spend right. it all. Yeah, right. And so there was this seesawing back and forth between, you know, borrowing money off mum and dad and then having to pay it back and go back to Sydney. And it was just a couple of years of just being in limbo and nothing really seriously, um, I guess, of any worth or merit really stood out for me with my career until probably the age of 23. Right, right, right. So it took a while.